the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. City International presents a five-day Word and Power Conference. Theme, The Believer's Heritage in Christ. Date, 14th to 18th November, 2018. Time, Wednesday to Saturday, 5.30 p.m. Sunday, 7.30 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Ministering, Drs. Abel and Rachel Damino. It's the revelation of Jesus all over the world. Nairobi, Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya. Well, first of all, before I talk about Nairobi, Kenya, I want to welcome all of you connecting to the Facebook broadcast and the YouTube broadcast. Look, this is the hub where you come and feast and eat the ever-increasing Word of God. You know, and the word of his grace. Brother Paul says, I commend you to that word that is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among the sanctified. As we are wrapping up the, the, you know, the UK tour, I want to quickly mention, Nairobi, Kenya, it's your turn. Nairobi, Kenya, all of you in Tanzania and all of you in Uganda and all of you in the, in the Kenya area, all road leads to the conference here in Nairobi. The date, the time, the venue is on the screen. The phone number for further information is on the screen. Everybody right here in the area of, of Kenya, you need to plan. Make your programs free for the dates on the screen and be with me in this Revelation of Jesus conference. Because until you see Jesus, you will never know who you are. It's going to unveil your identity, your capacity, and your ability in Christ Jesus. I'm looking forward to meeting a number of you right in the city of Nairobi as we flood the dark places of the earth with the message of Jesus Christ. Needless to forget that I will be in the city of Lagos. Lagos, get ready. Lagos, all of you watching me on Lagos on Facebook and YouTube, it's one day of the revelation of Jesus. The 25th of November. I'm too excited. You can see it in my face. The 25th of November will be Lagos. We're going to a feast and tabernacle in the word of his grace. Help me spread the news. Get everybody in Lagos on board. The revelation of Jesus to unveil the believer's identity, capacity, and ability in Christ Jesus. I'm looking forward to meeting every one of you that follows me on Facebook and YouTube and that follows my teachings right in Lagos in this conference. And all of you in the environs, Ogun State and all the areas around Lagos, those of you in Kotonu, those of you in Togo, even Ghana, you can come to Lagos. We'll have a blast as we unveil Christ and manifest the glory of God in the face of Jesus in our generation. Looking forward to connecting with every one of you. Well, on Facebook today, the word is going to be very powerful. And on YouTube, you want to invite people. Share the video on your page. Let's get it out there. You want to invite more people to hook up to this great world. Fasten your seatbelts as we get into the service now. Second Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the scriptures, therefore, is profitable for doctrine. The word doctrine means teaching. It's profitable for teaching that involves reproof. Teaching that involves reproof. It is profitable for teaching that involves reproof. The teaching involves reproof. Teaching here involves explanation. The explanation of something. The scriptures are given for teaching, for reproof, for teaching in the area of reproof. Teaching involves explanation. The scriptures are given to explain something. The scriptures are not given to explain business. The scriptures are not given to explain commerce. The scriptures are not given to explain health. The scriptures are not given to explain all of those other issues. There is a reason why the scriptures are given. It is given for doctrine, teaching, explanation in the area of reproof, the area of evidence. The scriptures are given to explain evidence explain evidence for explanation of evidence for correction to correct us in case we had a mindset that was contrary to the mission of the scriptures 
it is also given for instruction not general instruction but instruction within the parameters or the confines of righteousness so the scriptures are not given to us for all round operation there's a borderline there's a borderline they're given to us for doctrine for teaching for explanation in the area of reproof explanation in the area of reproof and then it tells us exactly what the scriptures are given to us to explain in verse 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures the hagios graphe which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ in christ in christ the scriptures are given to us to explain the salvation that we have in christ the scriptures are not given to explain to us how to do business or how to make money if you want to know how to make money and do business the university is there and there are courses there on how to make money and do business the scriptures are given to us to explain our salvation in christ case close it's so clear it gives us the mission of the scripture specifically to explain salvation the scriptures the entire framework of the scriptures is to explain salvation in christ finish all scripture that's the mission that's the mission of the scripture that's the mission of the scripture so the scriptures talk about one person is the message of one person the entire body of truth called scriptures are supposed to explain somebody the work of the scripture is to explain a person so the scriptures are written around one person and anything outside that person is an abuse of the scriptures making the scripture explain anything else other than that person for whom they are written is an abuse of the scriptures i'm teaching here anything else because they are given to explain one person it gives us borderline i love the word of god it's not just scattered it, there's no confusion it gives us borderlines it gives us specifics it's, it's not vague there are no gray areas it is very clear on its mission to explain a person the whole mission of the scriptures is around one person Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's the essence of Bible study. What am I looking for? John 5, 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. The scriptures have one testimony. Me. I am the testimony of the scriptures. I'm the one the scriptures are talking about from Genesis to Malachi. I am the testimony. The scriptures testify of me. I am the testimony of the scriptures. It is not given for, for commercial. No, I am the one that the scriptures are talking about. I'm the message of the scriptures. That's what Jesus is saying they testify of me the word testimony is evidence the entire scriptures are there to give evidence to the person called jesus it's a christocentric book with a christocentric message the scriptures testify of me search them then he said in verse 40 and you will not come to me that you might have life he was talking to the jews he said, I know you will not come because you don't know that I am the message of the scriptures. 
you are still looking for other things so you won't come to me but i am the message everything the scriptures are talking about is me they are talking about but i know you cannot because you are judging me by my age and you are judging me by the carpenter's house where i come from so you are despising the person who is the center of all scriptures revolve around me i am the message but i know you won't come jesus is talking to the jews you are missing the, the point you are missing the point you are still looking for things instead of looking for me the scripture is not about things it's about a person it's all about one person it's a christocentric book it testifies of me i love jesus i'm telling you are you ready to know jesus you will know him more this year trust me by the holy ghost you will know him more when he says search the scriptures what you're saying is investigate the scriptures to search means to investigate investigate the scriptures they testify of me the greek word for that for they are they take note of that they are they the greek word for they are they is p-u-n pun they are they it means they individually and they collectively testify of me that's why they are they they are individually are they collectively testifying of me that is both individually they talk about me and when you put their message as a collective message it is still me so both on individual grounds and on collective grounds i am the message of the scriptures am i teaching here yeah i'm the message of the scriptures they testify of me both individually and collectively for they are they they individually are they collectively p-u-n pun that's a greek word for for they are they it means individually and collectively the entire message of the scriptures is me i am the one i am the message outside me no scriptures i'm the message of the of the scriptures i love jesus nobody ever said that before jesus nobody ever said that and nobody ever said that after jesus he's the only one who could boldly say i'm the one they are talking about i'm the message of the scriptures praise the lord i say praise the lord i say praise the lord so he said investigate and you will see that the scriptures talk about me luke 24 25 then he said unto them "O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets all all now follow me carefully jesus after he rose from the dead called his disciples and he began a bible study with them this was jesus doing a bible study giving us a pattern for bible study showing us how to do bible study jesus was doing one himself and this is how he did bible study he said unto them oh fools <laughs> we saw foolish then we saw so foolish now we see fools oh fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken so jesus now is about to open all that the prophets have spoken what was the message of the prophets whether major prophets or minor prophets what was their message jesus is doing a bible study and he wants to open up to them all that the prophets ever spoke next verse ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory what he's telling them is look what has happened to me is not a mistake that I, this was after his resurrection he was telling them look what happened to christ because they were discussing about jesus it's not a mistake it is in fulfillment of that which the prophets that's to say all that the prophets were saying in different forms and shapes was that christ will suffer and that he will enter his glory summarize in two sentences the whole writings of the old testament 39 books jesus squeezed all and said this is what they were trying to say in many words i will suffer and glory will follow the whole old testament put together all of it jesus the message of the scriptures say look this is what they were trying to say i will suffer and glory will follow that's a summary but because they were natural men they could not hit it on the head of the nail they had to rigmarole and with many words try to say even though they couldn't say it but i am the person they were talking about so i can tell you what they are trying to say they are trying to say i will suffer and i will enter my glory that's all they were saying 39 books squashed into two sentences 
in the mouth of the message jesus the master then look at the next verse beginning at moses when you hear at moses he's talking about the first five books genesis exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy beginning at moses genesis exodus so he took them through the bible from genesis and all the prophets major and minor he expounded unto them in all the scriptures all all the scriptures the things concerning himself he did not expound to them the whole scripture uh -uh. it's not the whole scripture that you need there are things in the scripture that stand out and those are the things concerning him if they are not concerning him that they are not important because if they are not concerning him they are not they are not important because the scriptures are concerning him they testify of him he expounded to them in all the scriptures somebody shout it's all about jesus yeah he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself jesus is the message he expounded to them now this bible study that jesus was doing here is superior to the parables this bible study here is superior to the parables all those parables jesus was giving on ten virgins one wise five wise five foolish they were all parables this bible study cancels all the parables in fact removes them out of the road this particular bible study because the parables was before he died this is after his resurrection after his resurrection he reduced everything to where the important issues are am i communicating here yeah this after his resurrection all those parables of five were foolish five were wise um a, a man took seed planted on the ground all those parables about a man sold everything and bought a piece of land all those were parables to help them see that that they have to have faith in the christ but now they don't need parables because the real christ has comfort the savior the first one was incarnation that was not the real christ that was the christ out of whom the real christ was to come out of that was the incarnate christ when he died he rose no more as the incarnate christ but as the risen lord i'm teaching here so this is the risen lord now teaching them okay and you understand some more because we're going to pieces this bible very this is it like this you can't be carrying a book you cannot explain we're going to dismantle everything that you will see it clearly when i finish you will only be seeing jesus standing that's all you will see honestly that's all you will see you will not see anything else you just see jesus because the whole bible is concerning him it's evidence of jesus why you don't understand is because you have not been taught and you have not devoted time to be taught but thank god we have time now to be taught Put up verse 44 of Luke 24. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. These were the things I was trying to teach you, but you couldn't handle it. You couldn't understand because you were carnal men. These are the words I spoke while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled, which were written where? In the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning I'm the message. And when he expounded the scriptures to them, what happened to them in the next verse 45? Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That's what's happening to you here. Your understanding is opening because we're expounding the scriptures. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand. That means they were carrying the scriptures without knowing it until he gave them this bible study then their understanding open why did jesus give them this bible study because these are the men that were going to preach these scriptures after he is gone so if they must preach it well he the scriptures himself must explain to them what the scriptures is all about and this was a 40 days conference this was not a one day teaching they were together with jesus for 40 days expounding to them the scriptures and i'm going to show you how it affected them he was teaching them the scriptures so that they will know him because if they don't know him they can't preach about him you can only preach about who you know you can only testify about who you know and you can only be confident in who you know 
And you can only be strong in who you know. And you can only be assured and secured in who you know. If you don't know him, you can't be secured. Why do Christians visit native doctors? Because they don't know Jesus. How can you know Jesus and need a native doctor? What is a native doctor? The gods are dead. Ah. If they say they took your name, tell them, come and collect another one. Use your Bible and write. Say, take, take, take it there. You need my name. I can write it for you. I'll use my hand and write. Take it to the native doctor. Nonsense. The gods are dead. Which native doctor? There is only but one God. There are no gods. But you see, you can't have confidence in him until you know him. If you don't know him, you'll be playing church. The days of playing church are over. These are the days of the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons who know their father. Am I teaching here? Sons who know their father. And they know who they are in him. Satan is in trouble. Because a generation of men are rising out of this church. That will run Satan out of this world. If he likes he can go and stay in mass. He said these are the words I speak to you. But you didn't catch it. Then as he expounded to them the scriptures. Their understanding was open. I prophesy over somebody here. Your understanding is opening. Amen. I didn't hear that. Amen. amen. Now follow me carefully. Now when he told them that the scriptures speak about him. Okay. Remember. When he said the scriptures spoke about him. The scriptures he was referring to. By natural age were older than him. He was not born when the scriptures called the Torah was written. When we say the scriptures, it's not the whole Bible. The scriptures in the Bible refers to Genesis to Malachi. Because when Jesus said in John 5, 39, search the scriptures, there was no John. When Paul told Timothy all scripture, there was no Timothy. So that means it's not the gospel and it's not the epistle. So the scriptures will refer to Genesis to Malachi so when he was talking of the scriptures testifying of him he was talking about the body of truth the body of truth called the scriptures which is the entire framework of genesis to malachi the new testament is not called the scriptures the new testament is called the revelation of the scriptures because in the old testament jesus is concealed in the new testament jesus is revealed you cannot see jesus in the old testament except you look at the old testament through the eyes of the new testament because the new testament is the decoder of the codes of the old testament in the old testament you don't see j-e-s-u-s -S, but you see an ark noah builds an ark and everybody that enters the ark is saved because that ark is a type of j-e-s-u-s -S. but since they didn't have j-e-s-u-s -S, they had him in typology you will not see j-e-s-u-s -S, but you will see blood on the doorpost and when the angel of death sees the blood he will pass over that blood on the doorpost is jesus because the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous runs into it and they are saved thereby and whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved so the bio nakata you won't see j-e-s-u-s -S, but in types and figures you will see him there in the old testament you won't see j-e-s-u-s -S, but when snakes are biting people you will see a brazen serpent lifted and everybody that looks at that serpent is saved from the biting of the snakes and in John chapter 3 Jesus said just as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness so shall the son of man be lifted that means that serpent was a type of Jesus so the Old Testament we see codes that are decoded in the New Testament if you are catching this say I hear you alright so that means therefore follow me carefully when he said the scriptures testify of me what he was saying is that those scriptures contain prophecies since he was not born that means what you will find in the body of truth called the scripture will be prophecies promises because he has not been born and those things are talking about him so it will be in promise it will be in prophecy and it will be in types and shadows you won't see reality but you will see symbols and those symbols are pointers to him you will see prophecies pointing to him you will see promises pointing to him because 
that is the mission of the scriptures to point to him that is to come who is the center of the scriptures if i'm teaching say i hear you all right i'm going to show you something here thank you lord i'm excited this week is going to be very brutal <laughs> so in john jesus said they testify of me in luke he expanded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself all right now this man are about to start a teaching ministry after his resurrection so he took time to tell them that the book called the bible or the scriptures is concerning him is about him so let's get to the book of acts and see their messages what did these apostles what was the content of their message after the training of jesus in luke what did they preach because you know pastor praise the problem with the body of christ worldwide and i'm sure you're watching around the world is that there are too many messages that the church don't know the message we don't have messages we have one message yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. it's one message about one person paul speaking said when i came among you i desire to know nothing i don't want to know anything save christ that's the message and him crucified the message is christ the message is jesus the anytime you read this bible and you cannot find jesus you have not read go back and read it when when jesus opens you up every page you open you will see jesus inside i'm telling you something too many messages 25 steps to making it breaking of courses ancestral courses generation those things are all a, a they are a distraction from jesus i'm serious about this too many messages who stole my shoe who stole my goat in the church has the church become a shrine give me a spouse or i die die now if you die other people will take your place too many messages motivational speaking in the church comedians in the church you only need a comedian when you lose holy ghost you can't have holy ghost and be looking for a comedian for what now the joy of jesus passes to understanding a comedy cannot produce it there's something called the joy of salvation nobody can explain it there's no money in your pocket everything is against you yet you are very happy there's no way to explain that your smile is on you wake up feeling ready to go you look at the future with excitement yet around you nothing is talking because you can see something talking it's called the joy of salvation i may not have anything but i have jesus and if i have jesus i have everything he that spared not his son but gave him up for us all how shall he not also with him freely give us all things i came to tell somebody jesus will show up in your life too many messages too many. that the church doesn't know the message ask any br brother in the church what's the message he said the lord shall bless you you shall prosper because that's what they have been fed that's what has been fed the church materialistic preaching which does not help only stimulates the emotion has no impact to the spirit of a man self-oriented messages even the songs that are sung in the church they are a reflection of the quality of messages songs that only hype your feeling and have no nourishment for the spirit you sing them after you finish you're still feeling empty because they have no spiritual satisfaction am i communicating at all yes sensual sensual stuff just sensual yeah get excited after that you cannot face the devil after all the jumping you go to native doctor after all the singing and guru 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 in the night you look for babalao why no spiritual impact 
That day is over. Uh, this is the day of power. The church in power. Somebody shout, I hear you. And what is power? We are the word of a king is. What are you receiving here? That's right, power. Too many messages. So the question is, what did they preach in the Acts of the Apostles? And I'm going to show you some things that will really bless you. So I need your attention. I need you to carefully listen. What did they preach in Acts of the Apostles? Remember, all of them came out of a 40-day conference where Jesus told them that the scriptures are concerning him. Is that true? They just came out of a 40-day conference where Jesus told them everything in the scripture is concerning him. Is that true? He told them, search the scriptures for in them you think eternal life, you have eternal life, and they are there which? Very good. Now, so... Acts of the apostles is the beginning of their oppression. Acts chapter 2 verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter was quoting from Joel chapter 2. Then look at what Peter added there in verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves also know. As you yourselves also know. Verse 25. For David speaketh concerning him. Now they are pulling references from the prophets. For David speaketh concerning him. Not concerning it. Concerning him. The message is on him. Not it. Concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. That means the message of David was on him. Follow me carefully. Look at the next verse, 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. What did David say, verse 30? Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he will raise up christ to sit on his throne so the message was on christ david's prophecies we are on christ because jesus said the scriptures testify of me this is the first message david is i mean peter is preaching you know, and the whole message is christ christ using prophetic scriptures to open christ up in the new testament that was the first message that was preached in the church. It was a message on Jesus. 31. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ. That his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did see corruption. 34. For David is not ascended into the heavens. Hold it there. Hold it there. You know what Peter was telling them? That nobody in the Old Testament went to heaven. <laughs> he was giving them a revelation. That everybody that died before Jesus came didn't go to heaven. I've taught you that before. They went on the ground to a place called paradise. Waiting for the day of redemption. So now, Peter is telling these people that this is what happened to David. He didn't go to heaven after he died. Where did he go? He went to paradise. We will explore that in details in the course of the conference. But he said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand next verse until i make thy foes thy footstool everything peter was preaching on that day of pentecost was jesus 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 with references to the prophetic scriptures there was nothing else there's you can't see there it will be well with you you can't see it there you will make it your two pieces of meat in the pot will become 50 you won't see it there everything they were preaching was to unveil Christ where he is seated what he has done for us because that is the message of the scriptures I'm teaching here he didn't talk about you will be blessed he didn't talk about you will prosper he was only concentrating on the message which is Jesus that's Acts chapter 2 the message of Peter on the day of Pentecost that's the first message that was preached to the New Testament church in Acts. Acts 3.18. That's the second message Peter preached. But these things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets. What did God show by the mouth of his prophets? That Christ should suffer. He had so fulfilled. 
That's a message. This is the second day Peter was preaching. And his message again was still on Christ. That everything the prophet spoke about the suffering of Christ, God has fulfilled it in Christ. You see the scriptures? It's about one man. The message of the scriptures to reveal Christ. Finish. It's not about you making it. It's about Christ. The only way you are coming is when you are in Christ. So when you are in Christ, what was spoken of Christ becomes yours. Oh. That's why there is the in Christ. The in Christ is key. If you read epistles, it's always in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Because that is what we call identification. Your identifying with Christ is what makes what is Christ yours. Especially in the glory. Not in the suffering. The suffering is him alone. The glory is all of us. Are we together? Please, if you are understanding, shout, I hear you. Yeah? Jump to 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. When Moses and Elijah appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration and Peter said, Let's build three tabernacles, Moses and, and Elijah disappeared. What happened? The heavens opened. What did God say? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Then what did God say? Hear this one. Don't hear the rest. Don't hear Moses. Before God said it, Moses himself said it that a prophet shall rise. Him shall you hear. Everything I'm saying now. It is pointing to his coming. I'm teaching here. Look at the next verse. And it shall come to pass. Every soul who shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. He that believeth not is condemned already. He was talking about Jesus. Next verse. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold you of these days all their prophecies are on Christ all next verse ye and the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying unto Abraham and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed and when he was talking of thy seed he was talking of Christ the seed of Abraham is not Isaac the seed of Abraham is Christ. Isaac was just a drama. Isaac was like an acting. Acting of the script. That is why when they put Isaac on the altar, God said, remove him. I'm just playing. You think I'm serious about killing Isaac? Remove him, Joe. This one is just drama. The real thing. Look at it there. Carry that ram and put on the altar. That ram was a type of Jesus. And that is when Abraham saw Jesus. Because Jesus speaking in John chapter 8 verse 56 said, Abraham saw my days and rejoiced. Where did Abraham see Jesus? On Mount Moriah. At the place of putting Isaac. They removed Isaac and Christ died. You are like Isaac. It. you are the one to die and God said no 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 you, you don't have what it takes remove them Jesus die in their place that drama took place on Mount Moriah in the presence of Abraham to show Abraham that Isaac is not your seed your real seed is Christ I'm teaching here because this whole thing is about Christ this whole thing is about Jesus this whole drama is about Jesus it's the message of Jesus Somebody shout, is the message of Jesus. Can I hear you shout, I love Jesus. Can I hear you shout it louder? Put up verse 26 again for me. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. The summary of Peter's second day of preaching is Jesus. How that Jesus is the one that came. Jesus is the message of all the prophets and his mission is to turn you away from iniquities. That's the second day of preaching. Nobody is talking of material blessing here. Nobody is talking of you shall make it. Nobody is talking of colorful and bright you will get there. Nobody. Look, that's why that church was too powerful. They didn't talk about money but nobody lacked. Check it. They didn't preach money, but everybody in that church was rich. 
Bible said nobody lacked in Acts chapter 2. Nobody lacked anything. Why? Because when you focus on Christ, his riches become your riches. Nobody lacked. People were too blessed. They were abundantly supplied. Because in him there is no lack. In him there is no sickness. What cannot be found in him cannot be found in me. Why? Because I am in him. And not just in him but complete. Praise God. Somebody hearing me shout a powerful amen. amen. Are you understanding this message? If you're understanding, shout hallelujah. So we began to talk about the blessing of Abraham. And the blessing of Abraham right there in that scripture is not money. The blessing of Abraham is the forgiveness of sins. That's the blessing of Abraham. Because God forgave Abraham his sins and did not impute it on him. And so anybody that gets the blessing of Abraham, what he got is the forgiveness of sins. So when you sing Abraham's blessings are mine, you are talking about the forgiveness of sins. It's nothing other than the forgiveness of sins. And thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Jesus. Are you with me here? That's the second message. The third message is the message of, of Stephen. Acts chapter 7 verse 52. Stephen now is preaching. But the message of Stephen was very long because Stephen went through historical details. I'm not sure they gave him time to finish his message. Acts 7 52. Then he said, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers. Stephen is preaching, verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So Stephen was centered, his teaching was centered on the resurrection of Christ. Because Jesus told them that the scriptures testify of me. So all of them from Acts 2, Acts 3, Acts 7, their messages was Jesus. In fact, Acts 5.30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. That's the third message Peter preached before Stephen's message. Peter's message in chapter 5 was, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. That was the center of the message of Peter. And look at it, because of what Peter preached, the whole church joined him in verse 42 of Acts 5, 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach what? Yes, that was the message. House to house, in the church, all they were preaching was Jesus because that is the message. It's Christocentric. If you understand the shout I hear, it's about Jesus. So, I declare over you this morning by the power of the Holy Ghost, Jesus will rise big inside you. They cease not to preach Christ. House to house, temple, anywhere they gathered, their message was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He died, he was buried, he rose, he gave us victory. Jesus, Jesus, that was the message. Nothing else. No wonder Paul said, I desire to know nothing among you. Save Christ. That's the only thing I want to know. And him crucified. So Peter's three messages, Jesus. Stephen's message, Jesus. In Acts chapter 7, is that true? Acts chapter 8, there's another man there, Philip. Acts chapter 8 verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and what? Preach what? What did he preach? What did he preach? He didn't preach prosperity. He didn't preach success. I have nothing against prosperity, but I preach Bible prosperity. Bible prosperity is Jesus. He preached Christ. There was nothing else. He didn't enter the city and say, how you can make it fast? He immediately came to Samaria and said, I came to preach Jesus. And he preached the dead, the burial, and the resurrection. And that was it. And the whole city. Next verse. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And what happened to them. Verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with loud You can't preach Jesus and evil spirits are sitting down. Crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Next verse. And there was what? Where? When Jesus is preached, the resultant effect of the message of Jesus is great joy. Inner joy. After hearing this kind of message, you leave this place, you just be smiling. They ask you, ah, why are you smiling? Have they made you a commissioner? Say something better than commissioner. Something, what is commissioner? What, haven't you seen commissioners that are dying of high blood pressure? 
since Babangira came into power, both ex-commissioners and present commissioners. That is not why I'm smiling. No. Why I'm smiling cannot be explained. It is joy that passes all understanding. Only Jesus can give that. I remember when God born again newly. We used to sing, I have joy like a river. Joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. We're just saying it. It's not tied to anything. That joy is not connected to anything. It's just because of Jesus. Joy like a river. Joy like a river. Like a fountain. No time to be moody. The joy is too much. Even when problems are too much, the joy is bigger than the problems. The message of Jesus produces joy. The message of Jesus produces joy. Praise God. Are you seeing the trend of operation in Acts of the Apostles? I'm going somewhere. Look at the next verse there. In that same Acts chapter 8. What did now we saw that Philip preached Christ? So what was really the Christ that Philip preached? Now follow, listen carefully. One of the rules of Bible interpretation, one of the rules of Bible interpretation is that in order for you to understand what happened to a collective group, look at what happened to individuals. What happened to individuals is an indication of what happened to groups. That's a rule of Bible interpretation. Alright, now. So we want to know what did Philip preach? that made these people happy we want the details do you want the details we don't just want to hear that philip preached christ that's not enough message christ we want the details of the content of that christ that philip preached in order for us to get the details of what philip preached in that crusade let's look at an individual account between philip and somebody when we see what philip preached to the person we now know what he preached to the audience Am I teaching here? So in the same Acts chapter 8 and 27. And he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia and Enoch of great authority under Candace queen of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Next verse. Was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah as the prophet. Next verse. Then the spirit said unto Philip from the crusade. From the crusade, the spirit said to Philip, go near and join yourself to that chariot. Look at what was happening. Philip was preaching Christ. Miracles were happening from the message. In the midst of the crusade, as miracles erupted, the spirit said to Philip, leave the crusade, join the chariot. Philip turned, the chariot is on the go. As Philip turned, he's inside the chariot. He didn't run. He didn't use bicycle, not kekenape. I'm not talking of horse. I'm talking of chariot. The chariot was running. And the spirit said to Philip, join. When the spirit said join, as Philip turned, he was inside the chariot. There was no movement. He just turned and he was inside the chariot. Look at it. He joined the chariot. And as he ran feeder to him, and had him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou? And he said, How can I accept some man? What am I? Am I some man? Yeah. There are scriptures you will not understand. No matter how you read it, except some man. And this some man must have the anointing for opening it. One of my anointing is to make all men see. Is to make you see what you didn't see. He said, how can I understand? Except some man should guide me. I need help. Then what happened? And he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture where he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearers. So opened he not his mouth. Next verse. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Next verse. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speakest the prophet this? Of himself? Or of some other man. Next verse. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and 
and preach unto him Jesus. That's the message. From where did he preach Jesus? From Isaiah 53. Because that's where the man was reading. The man was reading Isaiah 53, verse 7 and 8. And Philip didn't say, let's start from another place. He said, eh, because anywhere you open, if you meet a man that knows the scripture, he can preach Jesus to you in Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He can preach Jesus to you in Psalm, even Psalm of Solomon, Proverbs, anywhere. So that's why there was no need to move from where you are reading. Let's start from where you are reading. And from where he was reading, he preached Jesus to him. Because the Bible is the book of Jesus. The message of Jesus. Look at the next verse. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, there is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? The message of Jesus. The message of who? The message of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus says, search the scriptures. They testify of me. Look at Acts chapter 10 verse 42. Another message of Peter in the house of Cornelius. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. 44. While Peter yet spake these words about Jesus, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost fell on them. Are you there? I said, are you there? So Bible study is not Bible study until it's a study concerning Christ. If it's not a study concerning Christ, you are on your own. In fact, let me show you something. Back in Acts chapter 2, the message Peter preached. I want to show you something. Highlight something there. Acts chapter 2 verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, say of God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Verse 18. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Are you here? Now, that is the prophecy of Joel. Now, Peter explains it in verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed forth this which you now see and hear question look up let me be sure you're following hold somebody's leg say i hope you're here i hope you're here i have a reason why i say you should do that hold somebody's leg hold somebody's leg very well don't be afraid just press the leg well tell the person i hope you're here because some people this is not the time to be meditating this is the time to be attentive there's a difference between meditate and attentiveness. Hello? Hey! I love the word of God. Question. When Peter quoted and said, It shall come to pass, Joel said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Who was Joel talking about? Huh? Who was Joel talking about? Who was going to pour his spirit? Huh? So, Joel was prophesying about Jesus pouring out his spirit. Is that true? Yes, so that is why in that verse 33 he said, Therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, that is after his resurrection, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, that's Jesus, he had shed forth, he has released this Holy Ghost. He has released this Holy Ghost because that is Acts 2 and that was Pentecost. That was the day the Holy Ghost hit that place. So Peter in his message was telling them that the Holy Ghost came from Jesus. Jesus gave us the Holy Ghost. So even the Holy Ghost is here for Jesus. He's not here for himself. That's what Peter was communicating to them. Are you following if you're understanding, say I hear you. But I'm going to show you something else and I'm going to ask you another question from Acts chapter 2 because I'm heading somewhere. Acts 2.38 Then said Peter unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39 For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call what promise was peter talking about huh the promise what's the promise what promise speak
speak confidently. Are you sure the promise is the Holy Ghost? So the Old Testament is a compilation of what? Prophecies and promises and types and shadows. So when Joel was prophesying Holy Ghost, what was he prophesying? The promise. Who fulfilled the promise? So Jesus is the fulfillment of the scriptures. See, you are not here to fulfill scriptures. Eh, eh. Jesus fulfills scripture. Your job is to harvest the fulfilled scripture. That's why all the promises of God are in him. Where are they? In him. Where are you? In him. Where are the promises? In him. Where are you? In him. So what is your job? To harvest the fulfillment of the prophecies where? In him. I'm teaching here see you don't have a problem your problem is you you your problem is you and what is your problem you don't know that's your problem nothing else everything God promised Jesus fulfilled it some say oh father fulfill your promises in my life shut up it's been fulfilled in Christ don't pray and remind God of his promises he has fulfilled his promises Christ is the fulfillment of all promises, of all prophecies, and of all types and shadows. And you are complete in him. Listen, this will be the most explosive year of your life. Trust me by God. This year is one year where things will happen to you that you cannot explain when it was orchestrated, when it was organized, when it was processed, and when it was finished. Your own is you will just be collecting. Yes, the finished article. Yes, See, when you understand what I'm teaching you, all of a sudden your perspective changes. The Holy Ghost is the promise of Jesus. And Jesus fulfilled it on the day of Pentecost. Because Jesus said, all scriptures must be fulfilled concerning me. So, Peter is explaining prophecy in scripture. How does he explain the prophecy? Through Jesus. He shows that every prophecy is concerning Jesus and is fulfilled in Jesus. All prophecies, they are fulfilled in Jesus. So, in the sermons in Acts chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 6, I mean chapter 5, Acts 2, Acts 3, Acts 5, Acts 6 and 7, which was Stephen, Acts 8, where we read, Acts 9 in the house of Cornelius all the sermons are the same thing concerning Jesus all of them all of them and they were all in connection to the teachings that Jesus gave in Luke 24 the prophets the law of Moses the Psalms concerning me and when the apostles began to teach all their messages were centered on Jesus because Jesus is the message of the scriptures. And you can never know anything until you know him. The only way you can unlock the scriptures is to know Jesus. And to know Jesus, you don't know him in pictures. You know him in his word. You know him in his word. And throughout this week, we shall just be opening Jesus from different aspects of scripture. So that the revelation of Jesus in you will rise big. And when his revelation rises big in you, you rise big in it. And then you can walk, the walk, walk your way through the earth without anything messing around with you. Anywhere you enter, people say, these men that have turned the town right side up have arrived. These shakers and movers have entered town. Anywhere you're found, you take charge. Because the Jesus in you is big enough to overshadow the environment. Somebody shout, I hear you. Fear no more touches you. When people are afraid, you wonder why they are afraid. Because where you are, fear does not exist there. Because Jesus reigns. The revelation, the picture of Jesus is big on your inside. It is called being filled with the fullness of God. Maximum load. Maximally loaded with Jesus Christ. I prophesy over you today everything that jesus represents will manifest in your life amen. that amen is not sanctified amen. 
Can I hear a better amen than that? Now, I want to show you something interesting before we wrap up. Are you blessed? Paul the apostle was not there on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> hey. And what this conference is about is to uncover what Paul's revelation of Jesus was. Because when we understand what Paul understood, we will do what Paul did. Paul wasn't there. Everything we saw was Philip's messages, Stephen's messages, Peter's message. We've not seen Paul's message, but Paul is a carrier of this thing. And when I show you Paul's own, you will see that Paul's own is different from their own. <laughs> Listen carefully. Peter was with Jesus. Peter moved with Jesus. Peter walked with Jesus. Peter rebuked Jesus. Jesus rebuked Peter. Do you understand? They were always together physically. Yet, it took Paul to teach Peter Jesus. Paul never saw Jesus for once. Yet, it was Paul that was teaching Peter who was sleeping with Jesus every day about Jesus. You know why? Because revelation is better than experience. See, what you experience cannot be as powerful as what is revealed to you. I prophesy over you in this week, revelation will rise big on your inside. Lift your right hand and shout, I receive revelation. I didn't hear your amen. Peter had experience, but Paul had revelation. Paul said, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb to reveal his glory in me, I did not confer with flesh and blood, but I went to Arabia and I spent three and a half years in Arabia. And he said, when I came back, I was giving revelations that even the human mouth is disqualified from stating. That means there are things Paul didn't say because the mouth could not carry it. It was too heavy for the mouth. Revelation. That's why he kept praying that the eyes of your understanding be, because Paul knows when your eyes are open, hey, kata, kata, don't start. When your eyes open like this and you see who you are in Jesus and who Jesus is in you, hey, you drink poison, it won't hurt you. You begin to reign. You begin to live the life the way it was designed to be lived. You won't fail. Oh. Amen. Somebody shout, I'm failure proof. Amen. That's right. We don't have it in this house. Now, listen carefully. In Acts chapter 15, the next time Peter will speak after Acts 10. <laughs> Brother Brain, you know, the last sermon of Peter was Acts 10 in the house of Cornelius. That was the last sermon in the book of Acts. The next time Peter will speak is in Acts 15, defending Paul. The rest of Peter's work after Paul showed up was to be defending Paul. His work was just to be defending Paul because Paul was the one teaching him and as he was understanding, other apostles did not understand. So when they attack Paul, Peter will defend Paul. Because now Peter was a student of Paul. That's why even in the book of Peter, which are only two books, first and second Peter, finish. With all his experience. <laughs> first and second Peter, finish. In that his book, when he was talking, he said, we know our brother Paul. How that he spec things that are too hard to be understood. Peter acknowledged that the teachings of Paul were too big for them. Peter acknowledged that. Because it was Paul teaching him. So that means he himself had a tough time understanding some of the depths of Paul. We're going to go beyond what the apostle saw and see what the apostle saw. And when that happens, man, you will look at death and tell death, get out. Go away from here. Paul did it now. That was when the death was coming. Paul said, hey, we'll stop there. I'm now between two things. Whether to go or to stay. Should I go or should I stay? Wait first. While well, I make up my mind. If I go now, I'll be with Christ. If I stay, you'll be encouraged. You need encouragement. Let me stay. Death, get out. Death said, yes sir. Death walked away. Every attempt they did to kill Paul, they could not succeed. Not a man of revelation. All their attempts... They locked him in prison. They beat him. He had shipwreck. They planned to kill him. They used diabolism. They used native doctorism. Nothing worked. One day when he has finished everything, he said, I have fought a good fight. 
I have kept the, the faith. I have finished my course. Henceforth is laid for me a crown of righteousness. Not only for me, but for all those who love is appearing. Then he said, I am now ready to be offered. That means now anything that can happen, let it happen. My defenses are up. It was after that that he, he was carried on. He died. Before that, nobody could touch him. There's a level of light you enter by revelation. Where you can walk through death and pass. Death will apologize for obstructing your way. Kabota, kabota. Eh, mojato negege. Engele mohoda. Listen, you will reign in life. Your amen is looking for the church. You will reign in life. You will reign over death. You will reign over poverty. You will reign over sickness. You will reign over lack. Ah, somebody shout Christ in me. Say the immortal one is in me. Is Jesus not immortal? I'm asking you a question. Pastor, pray, shake my hand first. I'm feeling something. I am asking you a question. Was Jesus not immortal? I was studying this thing yesterday. That's why I shook your hand. I was feeling something. The Holy Ghost spoke to me in the study. The man Jesus. The man Jesus was the man that died. The man Jesus died. It is the man that conquered death. Not the God, the man. And he rose as the man. He died the man, he rose as the man and defeated death as the man. And that man is inside you. Hey, I don't know if you heard what I said. That man is inside you. You don't die. <laughs> that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. through the gospel, life and immortality is brought to light. That same man that died was the same man that rose. And he rose never to die. And he lives in you. With this our eyes. We will see the total defeat of death. Because the men. Who the man is living in. Are growing in revelation. And they are seeing that death has been abolished. Death has been abolished is abolished that's the last enemy of God death and it has been abolished why it is the last enemy is because the revelation of the defeat of death is going to be one of the last revelations of the church and as the church comes into that revelation of life and immortality death will be totally disarmed it will lose its relevance He told me that. He told me that. He told me that himself. So if there are things you are struggling with in your body, as I'm speaking now, they are expired. Whatever they are called. Say with me, the immortal one is living in me. Therefore, everything that is contrary expire. I don't care what it is called. I don't care what his name is. He's got to go. The immortal one. He said, I am he that was dead. And I'm alive. I have the keys in my hand. I have the keys. Ooh, I have the keys. The keys are in my hand. <laughs> they are no more in the hands of your enemy. They are in the hands of your savior. And he with the keys is inside you. <laughs> he with the keys of death and of life. He's inside you. In charge. You are the one in dominion. So they that receive the abundance of grace. And of the gift of righteousness. What shall happen? 
They reign where? In life. They reign in life. They reign in life. They reign in life. They reign in life. Somebody shout, I reign in this life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's speak in tongues for a few seconds. Hey! Let's speak in tongues for a few seconds. Hey! Let's speak in tongues for a few seconds. Hey! Let's speak in tongues for a few seconds. Hey! Let's speak in tongues for a few seconds. Renenge morosete Ele morana 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 Thank you Lord Thank you Lord Throughout this year nothing you start with your hands will will die And nothing you touch will be stagnant Hey Hagaboya This is one year you will record the highest progress of your life Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Lay hands on somebody's shoulder and begin to pray in tongues on somebody's shoulder. On the shoulder. Hey! Let it flow out of your belly. Life is flowing in this building. Life is flowing in this building. Life is flowing in this building. Hey! Resurrection is in this house. Resurrection is in this house. Resurrection is in this house. Life is in this house. Hey! Gonja mona gegege bosaya. Ele moja gagaga. Mronange, mronange le mohota, ele moja, ele moja, ele moja gaba gaga gaya. Be strengthened with might in the inner man. Manda la goya, manda la goya, manda la goya, manda la goya. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh. Ege bo jata la na maha. Mro jakoro do bos. Jesus. Jesus. Mendo lo boro do bo jekere nege mamo mamo mamo. Jesus said, I and the Father shall come unto him and we shall reveal ourselves to him. We shall manifest ourselves. The manifestation of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your two hands to Him. I declare as your hands are lifted up, receive the manifestation of Jesus. The manifestation of Jesus. Mayano, Karana, Morange, Herana. As you leave this building today, you are living with resurrection, you are living with life. Where there is life, there can be no death. You are living here with resurrection. A decree by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every limitation is terminated. Restrictions are broken. Barriers are terminated. In the name of Jesus. Every one of you under the sound of my voice. The revelation of Jesus will rise big on your inside. You are blessed. Enjoy grace. Enjoy grace. Walk in the spirit. Live in the spirit. Live in the supernatural. Enjoy supernatural results. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It is done. 
Thank you, Lord. It is done. Your body is well. You are well. And everything around you is well. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can I hear a victorious amen? Go ahead and celebrate the life of God in this place. Celebrate the life of Jesus. Welcome back. Listen, gentlemen, welcome back. Look, look, I believe you've been blessed. What a word today. What a word. Now, don't go away. Please don't go away. I will be in the city of Nairobi, Kenya, with the revelation of Jesus. The dates are on the screen, the time, the venue, and the phone number for further details. Help me spread the news all over Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and all of that part of the eastern part of Africa. It's going to go up as we bring the revelation of Jesus to unveil the believer in him. I'm looking forward all excitement to what Jesus will do in the nation of Kenya. Needless to forget that I will be in the city of Lagos. Lagos, get ready. Lagos, all of you watching me on Lagos on Facebook and YouTube. It's one day of the revelation of Jesus. One day of the revelation of Jesus. The 25th of November. I'm too excited. You can see it in my face. The 25th of November will be Lagos. In the morning and in the evening is a Sunday. We're going to feast and tabernacle in the word of his grace. Help me spread the news. Get everybody in Lagos on board. The revelation of Jesus to unveil the believer's identity, capacity, and ability in Christ Jesus. I'm looking forward to meeting every one of you that follows me on Facebook and YouTube and that follows my teachings right in Lagos in this conference. And all of you in the environs, Ogun State and all the areas around Lagos, those of you in Kotonu, those of you in Togo, even Ghana, you can come to Lagos. We'll have a blast as we unveil Christ. And manifest the glory of God in the face of Jesus in our generation. Looking forward to connecting with every one of you. Help me invite more people to the platform to hear the word. To be built of the greatest gift you can give to a man. Is to connect him to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. I love you guys. I'm excited. Enjoy the rest of your day. And be blessed. Amen. Power City International presents a five-day Word and Power Conference. Theme, The Believer's Heritage in Christ. Date, 14th to 18th November, 2018. Time, when is it to start today? 5.30 p.m. Sunday, 7.30 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Ministering, Drs. Abel and Rachel Damino. It's the revelation of Jesus all over the world. Stay.